Hey, this is Kenny Young, and I want to teach you how to play zone defense. And how to cook Louisiana-style barbecue wings. And how to tackle your finances, too. My journey to becoming a defensive player was actually not the goal of becoming a defensive player. Little people know this, I actually was an old lineman. And to be honest, I sucked at football and the park ball first coming off. Uh, my first padded practice, <laughs> I told my mom, I'm not playing football no more. I hate the helmet, I hate the shoulder pads, I hate the contact. But it taught me a little bit about life, it taught me a little bit about being tough. So I moved into a linebacker position in middle school, but I knew that defense was more of my caliber because I could just run around and make 25 tackles in a game if I want to. I could have two interceptions, I could have big hits, I could have sacks. I could have stats in almost every category after every game. And that's what I love, as opposed to having one stat in only one category. Hi guys, I'm Kenny Young, and I'm gonna break down the importance of playing a zone defense. Step one, it's important that you identify how many tight ends, running backs, and receivers are in the game. In this formation, you have quarterback under the center, running back in the backfield, you have two receivers on the side, you have a tight end, and you have a receiver. What makes up zone defense is simple. There's one third, two thirds, three thirds that we want to cover. Step two, all these cover guys have to make sure they understand where the offensive players are lined up. You have guys playing in a third of each zone. That is important because you have receivers that runs in and out of zones and it cross. Step three, you want to make sure you get in line correctly and with urgency. Let's say I know that we have Travis Kelsey here at tight end. I know this guy being a threat, I have some action coming my way. Let's say for some reason that I didn't know that, right? The chances of that guy scoring and seeing what this, what this guy does best increases for him tremendously. And now the coach is cussing you out, yelling at you, and your teammates is mad at you because you're not getting, getting along correctly. Step four, you must, as a linebacker, be able to read where there's run or pass through the O-lineman. Some guys use quarterback's cadence, but for me, I like to read these guys' stance. I know if these guys are low in their stance, that it's a high possibility that I can scoot down a little bit to get ready for run. Also, let's say they don't show heavy run. Let's say these guys are light on their hands, almost like they're about to fall back. I know before the play that I can get myself positioned, drop out, get an interception, as I like to do, and go ahead and score a touchdown. But that's all a game, playing a game within a game. How do, how do, how do, how do. The occasions of barbecue is usually the day after a football game. Usually when I have friends over during the summer, we watch a UFC fight or we we'll watch a basketball game. Um, anytime we have a big occasion where it's for someone that's important to me, uh, I'll cook for them, I cook for my family, I cook for myself when I'm bored. So this is how to barbecue jerk chicken wings. Step one, first you wanna preheat the grill to 450 and let it get hot. You wanna make sure that you marinate the wings very well, preferably the night before or just a couple of hours before you put the wings on the grill. Everything is about presentation for me. If you wanna be a good cook, you wanna get a business deal, a bunch of people at the house, you wanna get a girl, you better know how to cook and present. I would say I'm pretty self-taught on how to cook wings. Uh, I know how to barbecue based off my roots from growing up in Louisiana. You know, I grew up in some swamps. I grew around uh, about 20 miles of straight sugarcane fields. I grew up around bayous, playing throw up tackle football in the, in the yard and uh, shooting basketball late at night by myself, you know, trying to find a way to make it. Step two, you want to make sure you put the wings on the grill first, let it cook about seven to 10 minutes, and then you want to pour the barbecue sauce, the jerk chicken sauce, and the honey. You don't need much. I would say about four tablespoons. So I'm from Louisiana, so <laughs> you ask any of my family members how much measurements do you put uh, honey or seasonings on something, they won't tell you. They just say a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of that. Um, that's not a measurement, <laughs> uh, but that's okay, because usually they tell you that because it ain't no set amount on how you're supposed to put on anything. It's up to your taste, and it's up to the experience and the experiment on what's best for you. 
Step three, you want to add your barbecue sauce onto the wings. You want to take a brush and dip it in the sauce and pour it lightly over the wings. Let that cook for another seven to 10 minutes. I want to make sure that this barbecue sauce is on as much of the bone and the cartilage of these wings. That way it really gets into, uh, seeps into the meat. Some of my first memories of eating wings was when I was uh, playing park ball. And uh, whenever, you know, I had a good game, uh, I always treated myself or my mom always bought me some wings. And uh, it was very good. I loved how they was cooked. I didn't know how they was cooked, but uh, I always, you know, had those wings in my mind for the next games because I wanted another set of wings. Step four, you want to make sure that the wings are cooked thoroughly and the barbecue sauce is grilled in the meat, ready to be eaten. I want to make sure it's not too burnt, a slight burnt. It's going to help with the taste of the jerk sauce. Man, I know when I did a good job when I take it off and the meat is very, very tender by the uh, grip of the tool. You already asked me if I'd rather score 50 points like John is did or eat a wing? Eat a wing for sure. Mmm. Life changing. Tastes so good, make you want to smack your mama. No, just play. <laughs> but do taste good though. Ow. 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 The way I've approached handling my finances has been honestly through self-education. Uh, I'm a big person on uh, studying experts. Most of my life, I actually was, uh, was, was broke. For me, I wish early on I would have learned how to have a relationship with money because really it's like a marriage. This is tackling your finances. Step one, you wanna make sure you open your financial bank statements. I can't tell you how many people have uh, looked up their financial statements over the past six months and really sat down and looked at each item and see how they've got better with every choice they've made with the expense. And I bet you a thousand percent that if you did do that, you're gonna become such a better person at making choices, at uh, creating that stress-free life that you want because now you know where your money's going. Step two, you wanna make sure you check to see how much money you have coming in, going out, and that you've actually saved. The most common mistake is that they don't bring logic to their spendings. Maybe you don't need the designer purse or the new designer sneakers, save that money, put a little bit of that money into the investment portfolio or something to where the extra $100 could grow. I'm all about that because that brings you logic and that gives you a chance at creating some financial freedom for yourself. Step three, you wanna make sure you create a financial goal. Don't get me wrong, everyone's situation is different. So to open up a savings account and you don't have money to even save is one thing. But if you have a plan to structure your life to where maybe you have to work one more job just to create a savings account, then hey, that's what it's gonna take, right? Step four, you wanna make sure of all the information you've received and find ways to use that information to make your money grow. I think one of the smartest financial decisions I ever made was to create a way where I don't have my money just sitting in a bank account. For me, I've taken heed to really buying into real estate. I love putting my money somewhere stored to where I can go out and touch it. It makes no difference if I have it in a savings account for 10 years and they only grew a few hundred dollars. Step five, you wanna make sure that if you have trouble managing your finances, that you talk to a local expert or a financial advisor to give you help managing your finances. Uh, this off-season, I took the initiative of introducing financial literacy program uh, ran by Tackett Young, and that's when the Unified Financial Credit Union and uh, LA Roman Board partnered with me to do this 12-week summit of teaching about 40 kids. For me, that was so big because it wasn't just me learning from Unified Financial Credit Union about finances and how it's important to me in my life, but it affected those 40 kids who's uh, about to hit the real world and uh, have an opportunity to use this education and this platform that I wish I had a long time ago to be able to go out and create a plan for them to, to be able to survive in freedom and uh, making the correct choices with their money. How to. How to. How to. How to. How to. I think my greatest thing about playing defense is that it's not like offense, right? Where you're relying on one guy every single play to throw you the ball. The chance of you getting the ball every play is very small or if you're even a superstar 
and you have great defenders, it can even be tough to get the ball. Everything is based on game plan. So for me, I like to make plays. I like to say, okay, they threw the ball here. I want to go make that tackle. I want to go make that interception. So that's why I love being a defensive player. That's why I love playing linebacker. That's why I'm still in the NFL.